Um, so the next example for the Tresca criterion addresses another issue which has to do with the determination of say the absolute maximum shear stress or the evaluation of the criteria itself. Sometimes working with the criteria um, the way it is provided in terms of the principal stresses might be hard and working with the original stress state might be a little bit more desirable. So in other words, uh, remember that we are given a state of stress. So in this case, um, it, it is, let's say, state of plane stress. Uh, we are given, say, sigma x, sigma y and tau xy. And I'd like to determine whether failure occurs or not. And what we've done is we've converted this picture to the principal picture at a point in the structure. We're geometrically representing the stress. And instead of that picture, I'm looking at the principal planes and I'm working in terms of sigma 1 and 2. And then my failure criteria is formulated in terms of sigma 1 and 2. But to formulate the criterion, first I need to determine them. And sometimes working with the principal stresses is not that easy. It might be more desirable to directly formulate the failure criterion in terms of x, y, and tau x, y. Of course, implicitly they are there, but what I'm talking about an explicit representation. We're going to see a similar issue arising as a matter of convenience when we talk about eventually the next uh, failure criterion. Okay, so here in this example, we have a solid shaft. Okay. Um, of diameter uh, d, let's just call it d because that's going to be a variable. Um, it's made of AISI steel 1020. Okay. Um, it's provided as rolled to indicate what the operation is. From all of that information, eventually we can find out that the yield strength of this material is equal to 159.260 sorry, 260 MPa. Okay. Okay. So, um, that's the structure and additionally there is a tensile axial force P of magnitude 200 kilonewtons tension and a torque which is 1.5 kilonewton meters. Okay. And what we would like to do is twofold. One, we'd like to find the safety factor against yield using the Tresca criterion, uh, maximum shear stress yield criterion, if D is equal to 50 millimeters, and B, um, if I would like to obtain a safety factor of two, what should be the value of the diameter? So the issue I just mentioned, the matter of convenience, will specifically apply to B. A can already be solved in the manner that I've just that we've just experienced with the other example. But I'm gonna formulate a single framework with which we can attack this problem. So first of all, uh, we need to address the stresses. The stresses are um, sigma x, the axial stress, which is simply law divided by area pi d squared. Um, over 4, uh, which comes out, if I know the value of P and D, to be a certain value. But I'm just going to leave it that way um, for now. And additionally, we have the value of the shear stress. Now, let's call the other direction Y. So we have tau XY. And tau XY, the shear stress, is going to be TC over JC is half the um, diameter. And j, as usual, it's pi d to the fourth over 32. So that's equal to 16t divided by pi d cube. Okay. Again, if I know the value of t and d as I do in part a, I can evaluate that value, but I'm not going to. So those are the only, th only stresses that we apply. Everything else is equal to zero. So let's make a note of that so we remember it. So sigma y is equal to sigma z is equal to zero. 
and tau xz is equal to tau zy is also equal to zero. So there is only one shear stress and therefore we have a state of actually plane stress because sigma z is also zero and the plane of plane stress is um, tau xy. Okay, so um, that's the situation that we are uh, looking at. And now I go ahead and try to um, solve part A. But the way I'm going to do that is not going by calculating the values of the principal stresses directly, but actually formulating it them in terms of sigma x uh, and the other values that I have here through an explicit equation, which we had considered very early on when we were um, discussing the principal stresses. We have actually... This actually, all, of course, comes from the Mohr circle. That's the appropriate way to remember it. So, but we had derived these equations before we talked about the Mohr circle. So the principal stresses are the center of the Mohr circle plus or minus the radius of the circle. And the radius of the circle is sigma x minus y over 2. Okay. So you take the distance of the sigma x point or the y point to the center, square it plus you square the shear stress, square root everything, that would be the radius of the circle. So plus minus would give us the two principal stresses. So in this particular case, sigma y is equal to zero. Okay, so this is gone, it's not there. We, have, we don't have to worry about the third direction. Sigma three is automatically equal to zero. And therefore, uh, we can find sigma 1, 2 is 2p over pi d squared plus minus square root of 2p over pi d squared. So it's the same quantity squared plus 16t over pi d cube squared. Okay. Um, all right. So, well, there are, instead of drawing the Mohr circle, a number of observations we can write, make from this equality. I can calculate numerically the values for part A, but for B, there is nothing I can do because I don't know the value of D. Nevertheless, this I can notice. Sigma 1 is going to be this plus that value. Okay, so it is positive because P, it is tensile. It's important that it is tensile. Okay. So that plus that value puts sigma 1 to the right of the vertical axis, the tau axis in the Mohr circle picture. Sigma 2, on the other hand, is this minus that. And here I see the same quantity repeated twice, right? Here and there. And therefore, even if this is not there, sigma 2 would be 0. But now, because it's there, sigma 2 is going to be negative. So sigma 1 is greater than zero, but sigma two is less than zero, which leads me to the result together with sigma three that the absolute maximum shear stress is going to be sigma one minus sigma two divided by two. Or when I look at the Tresca criterion, now let's therefore now go to part A. If I want to evaluate the Tresca criterion, I will try to calculate the effective stress normal stress, which is the max of sigma 1 minus sigma 2, sigma 2 minus sigma 3, sigma 3 minus sigma 1. Sigma 3 is 0, and 1 minus 2 is larger than everything else, and therefore the result is sigma 1 minus sigma 2. So when I subtract that terms cancels, and I get twice that value, so it's equal to 2 square root 2p pi d squared squared plus... 16t pi d cube. In fact, that doesn't, that applies both to part A and B. So let's just write that as a general piece of information and now proceed to part A. And now in part A, all I have to do is I need to plug in the value of P, which is going to be, I am sorry for that typo, let me correct it. I just need to plug in the value of P, 200 kilonewtons, T is 1.5 kilonewtons, I know the value of D, and I can immediately calculate what the value of sigma bar S is, and it comes out to be 
0.1 MPa. And therefore, with the given information of the yield strength, the safety factor is 1.63. Okay. So there you go. That's a straightforward evaluation of our observations. Now, part B is in particular where now this result is going to be very, very useful. Um, so without, right, so my goal is to find, let's go back, excess equal, I, I need to ensure that the safety factor is equal to 2. And therefore, I need to make sure that the equivalent normal stress does not exceed half of that value, which is 130 and PA. So that is the equivalent stress, okay? Um, and with this explicit expression, I can easily formulate a result. So what I am trying to do is sigma bar S is equal to sigma naught divided by the safety factor, which is equal to, in this case, 2. It's given, so it's 130 MPa, and it is equal to, this should be equal to, 2 square root, square plus 16t over pi d cube square. Okay. Um, so in this case, we know the value of p, we know the value of t, we don't know the value of d. So d is what we are looking for. Okay. Um, d squared, 1 over d squared, squared, 1 over d cubed, squared, everything square root, it's an ugly equation. So it's not easily solvable analytically, but you can easily solve it with a calculator. Uh, eventually, uh, numerically, we would find that d is equal to 54.1 millimeters. Is this surprising? We can just do a quick check. If the diameter is 50 millimeters, we get a safety factor of 1.63. To get a higher safety factor of 2, we need to have a larger diameter, right? So this is like a design question. It's the first time we're applying our failure criteria to a practical purpose of designing the diameter of a shaft. And we can see that the diameter comes out to be larger than 50 millimeters to ensure a higher required safety factor. So if you were to go ahead and try to formulate this part, in particular part B, directly in terms of the principal stresses, well, the principal stresses without this equation, you would have to determine geometrically, still you can do so, you will end up with the same result, but directly making use of the equations when you have it available simplifies your life a little bit. And that's what we have done here. And we've obtained and applied um, the result to a very practical design scenario.